Hello and welcome. I'm Richard Thomas. And I'm Nia Peoples. And tonight, you're going to experience what it feels like to have a miracle come into your life. You'll meet real people who've been guided and protected by forces that no one can explain, except to say it's a miracle. First, you never know where danger might be lurking. It could be waiting for you around a corner or down a familiar path. And if you're not paying attention, you may not know it's there until it's too late. Unless, of course, someone or something is watching out for you. November 1982. Sandra and Larry Johnson are returning home from a shopping trip in the small town of Purcellville, Virginia. This is farm country, with rolling fields framed by forest-covered hills, a serene, peaceful setting. Not the kind of place where you'd expect to find danger. But Sandra and Larry are about to turn a corner and discover the unexpected. Now what do we got up here? came curving around, there was a branch, and it was a branch that possibly we could have gone around, but we decided to stop and move it. Right. Larry got out of the car and approached the fallen limb. It was smoldering, it was smoking. And of course, this was an unusual thing. You don't usually see a limb in, in the middle of the road smoldering. It was smoldering in such a way that it was almost like a fire that has just died. You can't drive by. Look at that. We just looked and wondered what has gone on here. And then suddenly, they knew. A live electrical cable had fallen in the road, 30,000 volts of deadly current, enough to instantly kill anyone who came into contact with it. Let me go call the power company, okay? All right, buddy. Right. Sandra knew the family that lived in a farmhouse down the road and headed there now to use the phone. Larry stood guard to warn any unsuspecting motorists. After notifying the authorities, Sandra called her 15-year-old son, Robert, who was at home waiting to be picked up for football practice. Hello? Honey. Hi. Look, there's a tree limb down in the road. He's not very happy that he was going to be late. And I said, well, come on through the field. Uh -huh. It's about a little less than a mile, but when you cut through the fields, it wouldn't have been that far. But I did emphasize, don't go in the road, because the power line was down. But his mother's advice to stay out of the road would actually put her son's life in extreme danger. A section of the power line had landed on top of a barbed wire fence. And now, thousands and thousands of volts of electricity were being carried through the wires, across the fields and meadows, directly to the place where Robert would have to cross. If he touched the wire fence, he would be killed instantly. Twenty minutes later, Robert had not arrived. I began to realize a lot of time was passing and Robert wasn't there. And so I began to be a little concerned about where he was. Oh my gosh! Moments later, her concern turned to panic when she discovered that the broken power line was resting against the wire fence. He would have had to touch the fence because there's no other way to go through those fields except to cross over several different fences. And now she waited anxiously, not knowing what had happened to her son Robert since she'd last spoken to him. I received the telephone call and immediately picked up my helmet and shoulder pads and headed out the door. The distance was pretty short for me. So I ran to the fence and was going to just hop over the barbed wire. But as Robert approached the fence, he stopped short. At this point, something prevented him from touching it. Robert continued to try to cross over the fence. But as he neared it and reached out his hand to touch the wire, once again the mysterious force pulled him away. No matter how hard he tried, he just could not climb the fence. So I proceeded to the corner of the field where I rolled underneath the fence. I don't know why, because normally I would climb the barbed wire fence. 
Over 30 minutes had passed when the power truck finally arrived. Hi. Hi. We've got a live wire down. As Sandra and Larry explained the situation to the electrician, Robert suddenly appeared, out of breath, unharmed, and with his strange story of not being able to climb the fence. Robert may never know for certain what saved his life that day, but his parents are convinced that it was a miracle. God does give us blessings, and we received a blessing that day. Those lines had thousands of volts of electricity running through them. So that fence was electrified at the point that Robert was coming through the fields and trying to, to climb over the fence, and of course, the country boy knows how to climb over barbed wire fences. We were just thankful that nothing had happened. This happened to be for us a big miracle.